everybody and welcome back to the Station West Preview Show. My name is Jake, as always. We're back for another preview to this week, you lucky lot. Uh, we are hosting Portsmouth on Saturday in the Danny Cowley Derby. Um, so uh, we'll just go through Derby first and then we'll get on to Pompey. If you would like my full thoughts on the game against Derby, uh, please go and check out the West End Imp show that went up earlier this week. Myself and Mr. K uh, did about 20, 25 minutes on it. Um, but just to summarise, a really well hard-earned point. Um, I think that if we had 11 men on the pitch, I think we might have won the game. Uh, but unfortunately, Housley got sent off uh, and it sort of made it back to the wall. I thought Derby were a good side. They just didn't capitalise on Lincoln going down to 10 men and they really struggled to break us down. Obviously, both goals are offside. Um, the goal that they scored in the 92nd minute, I think David McGoldrick might have been on. So we might have got away with one. But, you know, it's a good point. That's four points off Derby and I don't think that's a fluke this season. So um, a really hard Four point on the road and looking forward to, to another weekend back at the bank. So, as you know, there is only one man that I can help me to preview the game against Portsmouth. Tom from 4-0, written all over it, a fantastic YouTuber. Go and check his stuff out if you haven't already. Uh, well on his way to 15k subs over on YouTube. So, uh, I caught up with Tom earlier this week and here's what we have to say. Right, only one man to speak to about the Danny Cowley derby, Thomas Chapel, aka Four Mill, written all over it. Tom, how are you, my friend? I'm very well, mate. We've both dressed for the um, the funeral at the weekend, haven't we? Yes, whether it's for Pompey or for Lincoln, we've, it's yet to be decided. That's not uh, what he said before we started recording, by the way. Just to <laughs> put it out there. <laughs> dressing um, up for Pompey's funeral was what yeah, I had to say. I thought we'd throw that one back across. How are fingers. you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Uh, I'm good. I've only just got my voice back after last night. Uh, and you had a pretty good Tuesday night yourself, which we'll come on to. Um, yeah. I want to get your thoughts down on, on your season because it's bit started off really well, electric. Uh, you were winning games left, right, and centre, and and then you had that really awful run under Danny, where you only won one in fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. Danny then got the boot. John Massinio come through the door. Just give us a little bit of a rundown of what it's been like sitting in the stands at, at Fan Park. Never easy. A roller coaster. It, we, we all kind of coined the phrase the Pompey roller coaster. Um it's it's been a yeah, it's been a season that's kind of done a full circle, to be honest with you, Jake. Uh, we started obviously coming out the blocks, performing really well, putting together some really good performances, and as a result, wins. I mean, you you saw us right at the very start of what was a, a great Kick off to the season for Danny Cowley's Pompey at the time, um, and we we kind of because we we obviously played you at Fratton Park off the back of that three yeah. three barnstormer at Sheffield Wednesday. Then we went on a run that was just superb. We were great in August. We were great in September. We were great in large parts for October, and then it all started to fall apart. Really, um, mm. I mean, I remember winning the, and beating Port Vale away from home one 0 and going top of the league back in. Back in the day, as it feels like now, because it genuinely this season feels like an age as a Pompey fan. Um, and then we tumbled, got as low as 15th, pulled the trigger on Danny, as you say. Um, it was obviously a low point. It was, you know, it's a tough decision to take. I'm glad we did it now, looking back. Um, I think it was a, um, a, a sensible call at the time. Didn't feel like it when it happened, of course. Um, but yeah, it was um, something that needed to be done, changed needed to happen. I think we probably ended up pulling the trigger a little bit too late, if I'm honest with you. Um, if we're looking at the kind of lead table now, um, I said before the game against Burton on Tuesday that we need to win four out of our next five. Lincoln is the second win out of those five if they are going to happen for us. If we're to be looking towards a positive business end of the season... And I think right now it's just a case of Pompey need to win as many games as they possibly can before it's mathematically impossible to not get the playoffs is kind of where we're stood at the minute. So what's the main difference, Tom, do you think, between a, a Danny Cowley Pompey side and, and a John Rossini Pompey side? Mm, stark differences, a lot of differences. We're winning games, that's one difference. Um, mm. I know we were winning a lot of games under Danny at the start of the season. I think this team's... I think we've simplified things. I think maybe at times the Danny and Nicky tactics were getting a little bit too overcomplicated for this group of players. I think we'd maybe run a course in terms of the the way that we were playing. 
I feel like quite a lot of what, and I think this applies to Kenny Jacket before Danny Cowley actually at Pompey, is that we play this way, we play a set way, we aren't going to change our ways no matter what comes our way and opposition we're playing. This is the Pompey way of doing things and this is how we're going to go about it, right? Under John Massinho, every single Pompey performance thus far has been different in some kind of way. Mm. So, you know, you, you take the, I mean, in terms of personnel, but in terms of also game idea as well, I think actually he's he's had some enforced changes to make. I think he's actually quite craftily made some team selections that have really suited us in terms of playing into our own hands against other opposition. You know, you you just got to take a look at the last two games. Plymouth, I know we lost the game and, and it could have been 2-2, but it ended up being 3-1 kind of thing. When you push it on the counter, it goes one or two ways. That's been well documented. Um, Rico came on and scored a goal. That's an inspired sub- substitution from my point of view. And then you take Tuesday night, for example, that winning goal is scored by Dane Scarlett, who's only been on the pitch for 15 minutes. The assist comes from Joe Piggott, who's been on the pitch for less than five minutes when the goal goes in. So you're kind of you, the, the ability to adapt, improvise on the spot, making decisions is a stark contrast between what I think we saw with Danny, which was, right, let's just stick on whoever we've got and hope for the best. And I know that's not the way he was thinking about things, but that's the way it came across, mm. particularly in the kind of dying embers of his premiership. Under John Massinho, I mean, it's, you know, you can kind of look at it, what, three wins, two losses and a draw. It's not amazing, of course. Um, it's early days, but you mm. can kind of draw a bit of a conclusion that when we're winning games, we're winning them not convincingly in, in the the most, in the majority of cases we are winning games. When we're losing games, we're not far off drawing games. When we're drawing games, we're unlucky to not win them. Mm. And before with Danny Cowley, we were having absolute stinkers where we were losing them and we were losing them badly. Vis-a-vis Charlton away, Charlton at home, Wickham away. There's a few, and and even before Christmas against MK Dons, that one sometimes slips the memory, but that was awful. Um, But now... I actually feel like you can contextualise every John Massinho game and say, actually, yeah, there's glimmers of we're going to do all right this season or there's glimmers of, yeah, if that is a kind of a moment where you need to take it into context and actually say, yeah, we could have done better there, whatever. Whereas with Danny, it was, we've lost the game. It's an awful performance and everything about it stunk. Whereas this is actually, you know what? We are, we were unlucky there, or you know what, we've won that in a way that he's actually put something together in order to come out with the three points, and and he's he's thought about not that Danny wasn't thinking about it tactically, but there's a real tactical nuance to his thinking, and and that's been really enjoyable to watch. Uh, and obviously, Burton. Then last night you, you mm-hmm. spoke privately before you said if you didn't beat Burton, you weren't going to come to Lincoln. Um, I did. Um, luckily. Uh, I was keeping an eye out on Pompey's score at Derby and, and Dane Scarlett popped up with the winner. Um, what did you make of a Tuesday night? It was pretty, uh, from what I could tell of your video, it was pretty you know, dire at parts, but then you, you managed to, to somehow get the winner really late on. Yeah, with, with no disrespect to Burton, of course, a very negative side. Um, I, I think they kind of set up to not let any in and not score any either. And just kind of try and frustrate the life out of Pompey, which I think a lot of teams have, have done really well this season. Fleetwood came down to us and did it. Oxford did the same. So did Shrewsbury and they all got away with a point. Um, and in some cases actually looked like the better team. It comes back to what I was saying earlier about John Massinio finding a way of actually subverting the, the status quo that teams try and impose on us and finding a way through. It wasn't looking like we were going to, if I'm honest. And, and I was uh, put it this way, I was sat in the stands. I've said this to people around me that I, I, I was sat there thinking I'm really not going to bother editing this video because no one's going to watch want to watch this because it's you know up there with one of the worst games that we've had to sit and enjoy that was reflected in the stands the atmosphere Fratton Park you've been there it's normally a rocking place and it was very quiet out uncharacteristically quiet as well um so yeah that that was that and yeah I, th- I think Burton had a game plan 92 minutes it worked and then in the 93rd, it just all came crashing down. Um, so, you know, you, you, you got a feel for the 102 Burton fans that came and, and made the trip down to see it all. Um, I'm just absolutely delighted that they managed to waste just enough time for us to get that 92nd minute winner, mate, because uh, the three points was very much 
necessary. I think well deserved on the balance of play. We absolutely hammered them. Um, there's there's no two ways about it. Sixty eight percent possession, twenty two fouls Burton committed, twenty two, mm. <laughs> four yeah. yellow cards. And it's like, well, you know that that kind of. I know we're not a stats based game purely football, but that tells you everything you really need to know. There's probably three golden goal scoring opportunities from a Pompey point of view. Craig McGilvery pulls off two unbelievable saves, but. So does Joshua Luiemi, and that, yeah. and he's, that can't go under the radar because he's kept that kept us in that. As did Matt Macy when we were playing against Exeter at Fratton Park in John Messina's first game. It felt like two really pivotal moments. Joe Rowe was man of the match as well, which you'll be delighted as as much as I was. He had a really good game. He's playing a new role under Messina as well. I, I really like the way Joe's playing. He's he's front footed. I spoke to Sean and Dave outside Plymouth. They came over and had a little chat and actually broke the news that Matt Macy wasn't going to be featuring about half hour before the team news came out. So we were all kind of a little bit subdued going in and people couldn't really work out why. Um, so we we had a nice chat with them, obviously chatting about Qatar and stuff. And, and they were also saying that he, Joe's really enjoying his football under the senior. Obviously, the main reason why he came to Pompey was Danny Cowley, but he's, he's had this renewed regeneration and, and, and this kind of renewed sense of confidence about him. And he scored a goal as well, of course. So uh, hopefully he does the same at his old stomping ground on Saturday. We'll see. Yeah, Joe Morell goals are pretty hard to come by, so I'd be mm. I'd be surprised if you get more than one this season. Um, I've been marked a few players for for Pompey who are going to be danger men on Saturday. Uh, yep. None more so than the man with the magic hat, Colby Bishop, scored three times against us last year for Atkinson. Yeah. Um, also, I think you've got a, a a great deal of good players. I think Owen Dale is a cracking player. Paddy Lane, who you just brought in, obviously for a, a fee, is very exciting. Um, and Towler as well, someone Lincoln were linked to a couple of years ago. Talk us through your main threats and, and who you think is going to make a difference in a blue shirt on Saturday. You've, you, I mean, you've you've mentioned it there. Um, there's there's not really many I'd add to that list, although the, as you say, there's there's talent all over the pitch which we're really blessed with at the moment. And that's not me saying that in a, a big headed sense. I just think it's a really decent bunch of players that we've got at the moment at the football club, which is really good to see. Um, I actually think Colby's been off the ball for a couple of weeks, Jake, if I'm honest. Mm. I don't think he had his best game on Tuesday night. Obviously, when Colby Bishop doesn't score, you can kind of earmark that as a bad game. But, you know, 16 goals this season in all competitions, yeah. 12 in League One. You know, it's, it's outrageous, really. And I think he'll be playing in the Championship with or without Pompey next season, unless we do something miraculous to entice him to stay um, or don't accept any any bids for, or any offers from from elsewhere. Um, Owen Dale's sparky. He's got this flair about him that I really like. He's been criticised recently for his kind of, you know, he, he he does the the river dance on the ball and then there's no end product as a result. He, mm. He's actually started to get some balls into the box, particularly against Plymouth, and, and he was doing really well against Burton. We overloaded the box massively on, on Tuesday night and that was testament to, to, I mean, Paddy Lane's got a serious delivery on him, as has Owen Dale. Um yeah, Connor Ogilvy is is another one that I would kind of point out. I think we might have spoken about him the last time we did a preview for one of these games. But he was, yeah, he he, he was kind of the the creator of that goal at, at the death. Really, it all stems from Connor Ogilvy and him beating his man initially for that ball to then drop down into the box for Piggott and Dane to finish. So it's uh it's one of those. Dane will go to Dane Scarlett will go to St Bank with a lot of confidence from from his goal. He got an absolute hounding and a pasting, and you were there on. 4-0 Sunday Live when we were having the conversation about Dane Scarlett against Plymouth. I'm glad he's got the goal and I hope that sets him up for another handful now to contribute towards what will hopefully be some some interesting games coming up for Pompey towards the end of the season. But yeah, all the names you mentioned, plus Ogilvy and, and, and Scarlett, maybe with a renewed sense of confidence about him for Saturday. Yeah. Um, we also like to take a look at the last time the two teams faced off, which obviously yes, was the start of the season. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. In, in Lincoln's, as you dub it, Lincoln's famous nil nil draw win at, at Fratton Park. Can we talk uh, about uh, last time we were at Cinsel Bank as well? No, like no, we do can't that. do that. There's no, there's no need for that because we've already played you once this year. Oh, okay. um, All right, then. What did you make of, of, of that nil nil draw? I know you probably weren't happy with it coming out. Did you think Lincoln deserved a point based on the balance of play? Because I certainly did walking out of Fratton Park. Yeah, I I think I think you probably did. I felt like it was kind of uh, a day for Pompey to really find out who they were. I think we'd had a lot of wholesale change over the summer. It was our first game at Fratton Park of the season. I feel like there was a lot of expectation in the build-up, sold-out crowd, mm. summer's day, all that kind of thing. And that's that's me basically just making excuses to say that <laughs> I felt that you more than matched us on that day. Um 
I don't think there was a, I can't recall a, an obvious no. goal scoring opportunity either way, to be honest with you. I no. think he came down and, and I think Ben said it at the time, job done for Lincoln in, in that sense, because that's exactly the, the you mean, I mean, you, you felt like you were unlucky on Tuesday night, but when you go to Pride Park, when you go to Fratton Park, when you go to Portman Road, mm. I know you've had success against Ipswich this season. When you go to Hillsborough, you want to get a point, and if anything else, it's a bonus, and just don't lose the game. And I feel like that's that was kind of a real example of that kind of game when, when you came down to, to Pompey. Um, as I said, yeah, a lot of expectation riding on that. I think everyone was hoping we were going to kick off the season with a win, and we didn't. Um, but I was impressed, mate. And I, I, I say this with my chest, and I'll, I'll make sure I put it in the video for for 4-0 heading into Saturday. I think this is the best Lincoln City team we will play as a result of our kind of starting to play you again in the league, as it were. I know we had some mm. um, some previous history in, in decades gone by, but since we've been playing you regularly again in the league, I think this is the best Lincoln City team that, that we will face up to. Um, albeit other than that playoff side that went to the stadium alight, I don't think mm. there is a, another Lincoln City side that I can remember having this much quality in it. So I'm intrigued to see what Saturday brings. But I was impressed by by you boys down at Fratton Park back in August for definite. Yeah, I'm going to test you now. Who do you think, from a Lincoln point of view, is going to cause Pompey some problems? And um, obviously without Ben House on Saturday, which would be a massive plus for, for Pompey. But any other Lincoln players caught your eye? Yeah, you, well, you mentioned Ethan, haven't you? I mean, that boy's come in and just set the place on fire completely. Um, I, th I think he's, you know, it, you've been waxing lyrical about him. You don't need me to say anyone. I'm sure it's featured across this podcast for for the last couple of weeks about how how good he's been and everyone's been waxing lyrical about him and, and so they should. I think that's that's really exciting for you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a little bit interested by House not featuring, to be honest with you. I, I don't know whether that's going to be as significant as, as we might think. You mentioned your back line. I mean, that's, you know, th there's there's obvious quality there. I think there's a lot of youthfulness to the back line, am yeah. I right in saying as yeah. well? Yeah. Um, if I was going to pick out one, your man of the match, Lewis Monsma, on Tuesday night, I would probably say, you know, you you. you he is going to have his hands full down down your right hand side for definite because Pompey's left wing is is definitely the stronger of the two. Um, Carl Rosworth, of course, was a keeper that that we were after before we brought in Griffiths at the start of the season too. So we've um we've got some um got, we've got some history transfer wise, haven't we, Pompey mm. and Lincoln? Um, oh, yes. And obviously Jack Jack Diamond's going to operate in that cam role and and try and cause issue as as he as I'm sure he will. And and there's obviously. I want to try and say his name. I'll just say his surname Shadipo. I'm not quite <laughs> sure on the first name, but I'll, I've I've gone for it, and hopefully that was that was half decent. I know he only played an hour against Derby, but he's always gonna... got a goal. Yeah, exactly, and and that's all you need from from him, isn't it? You know, he's he can the two shots, and one of them goes in. So it's you know, it's one of those. So yeah. Good stuff from a, from a Lincoln point of view. I think it's a it's a good time for both teams to be playing each other, which is an interesting thing to say. But I'm sure you know what I mean. Um, and I think I can see a um, not a similar game to Burton, but I can see it having traits that will remind us of Tuesday night for sure. I feel like it, it's going to be one of those where you, you're just kind of waiting for something to happen and, and you get these major opportunities and they go a begging for both teams and, oh, will that cost us? Will it not cost us? That kind of thing. Um, but I can see a 1-0 or a 2-1 Pompey on Saturday, mate, personally speaking. Brilliant. Can't wait for that. Uh, you will not be coming to my flat if you do beat us. Uh, oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. Um, right, Tom, thank you for coming on, mate. Just please tell the people um, on the channel what you do and, and where they can find your unbelievable work. Well, I, I wouldn't call it unbelievable work, mate. I, um, I follow Pompey up and down the country on Fauna written all over it, which has quickly become the bane of my life during the season because it's um, kept me busy, put it that way, in terms of on and off the field action. Um, but yeah, fast approaching, 13,000 subscribers. And um, yeah, if you want to come and join the ride and see what Pompey are getting up to, then um, again, drop us a subscribe and we'll see you all Saturday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, right. There's much more right. to say on that. Thank you for having me as well. That's something else I, I have to say as well. Always a pleasure, Tom. Always a pleasure, my friend. Now he hasn't got John T. He has to rely on me these days, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Massive thanks to Tom for coming back on the channel. Uh, really good lad. 
really good content that he makes. So check out uh, his content that he's done before. I've appeared on there a few times. Um, also, uh, he'll upload his match day vlog on Saturday slash Sunday, depending on when he can get it up. So go and check him out. But that does bring this episode of the Stacey West Preview Show to a conclusion. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Um, we are trying to reach 1,000 subs on the channel. Uh, if you could like, comment and subscribe, that would be massively appreciated. So um, until next time, up the imps.